Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our grand library. Today our tale takes us into the depths of history, where we shall uncover the secrets of the Stone Talon Mountains. The Stone Talon Mountains are a range of mountainous peaks situated west of the Northern Barrens, south of Ashenvale, and north of Desolus. Historically, these peaks were the ancestral domain of the Harpies, yet their numbers have decreased amidst the region's unrest. Stone Talon Peak, the largest mountain in the range, holds significant spiritual importance for both the Night Elves and the Tauren. Once, the Night Elves maintained a barrow and a glade at its summit, yet it faced malevolent assaults from an ominous presence. Moving southward, the mountainous region is less densely forested, although some scattered evergreen trees do dot specific areas, such as the Great Wood Vale. Within these mountains, creatures like kobolds, spiders, and eagles all roam the lands, while the charred vale stretching toward the sea harbours perilous black dragons and powerful elementals. The oldest recorded tales of this region are shrouded in mystery. Legends speak of the moon goddess Alune blessing a fountain of health in the land that is now recognised today as the Stone Talon Mountains. A fountain of health was a haven where explorers traversing the ancient lands of Azeroth could naturally restore their health just by being in its vicinity. Regrettably, there are no remnants of these fountains existing in the known lands of Azeroth after the events of the Third War. Due to the region's close proximity to the once ancient night elf city of Lothal Azal, this territory would have been inhabited by the night elves. Once gentle hills offering serene views of the western ocean waves, the Stone Teller Mountains underwent a dramatic change during the Sundering. The Sundering upheaved sandstone cliffs and towering peaks, creating deep chasms and gorges where water from the eastern coast flowed. Over time, erosion by the Black Wolf River sculpted the mountains into an extensive maze of canyons and cliff formations. Despite the substantial changes the mountains underwent during the Great Sundering, the intricate nature of Azeroth beneath them remained preserved. Throughout the world, there exist pathways of mystical energy known as ley lines. These channels of magical essence serve as the lifeblood of Azeroth's lands, akin to the veins within a living being. They are acknowledged by every culture inhabiting Azeroth, often revered as the sacred sites of the light, moon wells, and natural spots brimming with elemental forces revered by the shamans. Yet, most cultures concentrate on specific locations where these lines intersect, seeking to harness the greatest concentration of power. Two ley lines are known to exist underneath the Stone Talon Mountains, the Great Maze and Mount Farview. The Great Maze, recognised as the Stone Pattern, this runic design formed from the ley line is utilised to enhance resilience, and Mount Farview, recognised as the Pattern of Awareness. If positioned at or near its summit, individuals have an extended visual range, amplified echoes from nearby peaks, and even the faintest of scents carried by the winds reach every nostril. Despite the sundering that led to the ancient night elf city of Lothal Azal being lost to the depths of the Veiled Sea in the north, reports continued to confirm the presence of night elves within these lands for centuries to follow. The mountainous proximity to the once hallowed Mashan Shi lands drew in the Tauren. Around 1,100 years prior to the Dark Portal's opening on Azeroth, the Tauren roamed Kalimdor's forests and plains, living harmoniously with nature. Among these regions, the lush grasslands of Mashan Shi held particular sanctity. However, this sacred expanse met a tragic fate as the colossal earth elemental, Princess Theradrus, stirred from her slumber. Desperate for rejuvenation, Theradrus drained Mashan Shi's vital energies, leaving it barren. The Tauren mournfully named this once sacred land, Desolus. Due to the lingering influence of the once great Kaldori Empire and the Tauren's domain over their central Kalimdor lands, accounts propose an era where the Night Elves and the Tauren peacefully cohabited within the Stone Talon Mountains. The Stone Talon Mountains then vanished into the shadows for the following millennium, offering a sanctuary for the Night Elves, Tauren, and its other inhabitants. Skipping through time from the distant ages before the Dark Portal, right up to the period after the events of the Dark Portal. 10 years exactly, one race did not share the same deep connection with the lands of Kalimdor that the existing Night Elves and the Torrents had, the Goblins. These small, green, crafty folk arrived on Kalimdor after the Second War on Azeroth. About four years post the Second War, the Goblin city of Gadgetsan had already been established in Tenaris. This was verified by the renowned Alliance explorer and captain of the Wavestrider, Graydon Thorn, who visited the city. 
The goblins swiftly spread across Kalimdor in their relentless pursuit of wealth, with some goblins eventually finding themselves in the Stone Teller Mountains. They later established a goblin cartel in the region, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. Travelling another decade through time, we reach the year 20 after the Dark Portal, a period marked once more by the tremendous strife in the realms of Azeroth. During the events of the Third War, the serenity within these mountains would diminish. The leader of the Kirin Tor in Dalaran, Antonidas, embarked on a quest to investigate a mysterious plague spreading across northern Lordaeron. During this mission, he encountered the Prophet, a mysterious being urging the Grand Mage to lead his people westward to Kalimdor. Antonidas dismissed the Prophet as a lunatic, but Jaina, who observed from concealment, sensed immense power within the Prophet's words and suggested they heed his warning. Months later, when Arthas and the Scourge assaulted Dalaran, both Jaina and Antonidas realised the truth in the Prophet's forewarnings. Antonidas advised Jaina to gather as many survivors from Lordaeron as possible and sail towards Kalimdor. After the destruction of Lordaeron and the fall of Dalaran, Jaina Proudmoore embarked on the voyage to the mystical realm of Kalimdor. The group of alliance she took with her would soon be known as the Human Expedition. It compromised of various military and civilian groups from the Alliance, all seeking refuge from the plague of undeath and the scourge that ravaged Lordaeron, Quel'Thalos, and Dalaran. Shifting our focus to the Horde's narrative, in the time leading to the fall of Lordaeron, Thrall and Grom Hellscream worked tirelessly to rally the scattered Horde forces. One night, Thrall received a vivid vision that foretold of imminent conflicts and catastrophic events. This vision, not a mere dream, but a message came from the mysterious prophet. The prophet revealed cryptic truths about Thrall's nature, urging him to leave Lordaeron and seek salvation in the mysterious lands of Kalimdor. Following the prophet's guidance, Thrall gathered the Horde, constructing a base and readying for a voyage across the Grey Sea. Amid these preparations, Grom fell captive to humans, prompting Thrall's swift intervention to rescue him. Inspired by Grom's idea of seizing human ships for their exodus, the Horde embarked on a daring escape setting sail toward the unknown realm of Kalimdor. However, their journey encountered a violent storm near the Maelstrom. In a tale that will be told on another occasion, the storm led to Thrall's forces seeking refuge on an uncharted island, only to be captured by Murlocs. Forming an alliance with the trolls they found there, they broke free from the Darkspear Islands and resumed their journey to Kalimdor. Upon reaching Kalimdor's shores, the scattered horde emerged, many barely surviving the sea journey. Thrall scoured the coast, gathering orcs and trolls, but found no trace of Grom Hellscream. Engaging in battle to protect the Torren from centaur assailants, Thrall encountered Cairn Bloodhoof, chieftain of the Bloodhoof tribe. Impressed by their honour, Cairn offered aid in discovering the Horde's destiny. Cairn revealed to Thrall the tales of the mystical oracle of Stone Talon Peak, believed to hold the key to their destiny in these unfamiliar lands. When Thrall reached the base of the Stone Talon Peak, he discovered Grom Hellscream and the Warsong clan engaged in combat against human forces. The pass leading up to the mountain was also restricted by Proudmoor's troops, who, unknown to the Horde, had also arrived at the Stone Talon Peak. This prompted Thrall's decision to enlist goblins for assistance, and they utilised zeppelins to bypass these defences. While attempting to stealthily approach the goblins, Hellscream impulsively attacked the humans, leading to a skirmish between them and Thrall's forces. To protect his allies, Thrall engaged in battle against the enemy bases. After acquiring the Zeppelins, Thrall confronted Grom, who believed that a true warrior would directly face the humans instead of sneaking past them. Concerned at Grom's aggressive tendencies, Thrall ordered him and his clan to gather wood in Ashenvale for their settlement while he ascended the mountain to meet the Oracle. Despite initial reluctance, Grom complied with Thrall's request. Meanwhile, Thrall encountered Cairn once more. However, reaching the summit required dismantling human defences, for which Cairn proposed seeking assistance from the Stone Talon Mountain's wyverns. These creatures were captive to the malevolent harpies, but after a fierce battle, they were liberated and pledged their support to Thrall and the Horde. With their aid, Thrall managed to vanquish the human encampment and proceeded into the caverns of Stone Talon Peak. As Thrall and Cairn explored the caverns, they eventually discovered the Oracle's chamber. However, upon arrival, they discovered that Jaina Proudmoore had already penetrated the cavern. Their encounter with Jaina almost escalated into a confrontation before the Oracle intervened, revealing himself as the prophet previously encountered in Lordaeron by both Thrall and Jaina. Following quick introductions, the prophet conveyed that the Burning Legion invasion had already commenced, resulting in the fall of Lordaeron. 
The prophet warned that the orcs and the humans needed to unite against the common threat, or face annihilation by the hands of the legion. He also informed them that Grom had already been corrupted by an agent of the Burning Legion during an operation in the forests of Ashenvale. Despite their reservations, they agreed to combine forces, Thrall especially, driven by the urgency to save Grom. Assisted by the Alliance, the Horde departed from the Stone Teller Mountains, journeying to the Barrens to track down the corrupted Grom Hellscream. To discover more about Thrall's confrontation with Grom, you can tune into our Tales of Ashenvale. A safe portal to the narrative of the forests of Ashenvale can be found in the description below. Not directly linked to the Stone Teller Mountain Tales, this story is one that demands closure. Thrall received a vision urging him to bring Jaina to a grove at the foot of Mount Hyjal. There, the prophet revealed himself as Medivh, the last guardian of Tirisfall. He convinced them to unite against the Burning Legion, warning of imminent defeat otherwise. In a tremendous battle, Archimonde was finally vanquished, sealing the defeat of the Burning Legion. The victory at Mount Hyjal signified the conclusion of the Third War. The aftermath of the war left lasting wounds among all races, prompting them to unite for a fresh start, marked by the tentative truce between the Alliance and the Horde. The remaining Alliance troops, led by Jaina Proudmoore, established themselves in southern Kalimdor. Along the eastern shores of Dustwallow Marsh, they constructed the sturdy port city known as Theramore. Thrall led his people and sought a place in the rugged, splendid lands of the Barons. Here he established the lands of Juratar and built the great capital city of the Horde known as Orgrimmar. In the years that followed, Azeroth witnessed the ascent of one of the world's most notorious villains, the Lich King. However, the Stone Teller Mountains gradually faded into obscurity as the attention of Azeroth turned elsewhere. Throughout this era, only a handful of courageous adventurers persisted in exploring the legacy of the Stone Teller Mountains. Several years after establishing themselves in Kalimdor, the goblins expanded their control over the Stone Teller Mountains. Some goblins came together to create the Venture Company a notorious goblin-run cartel known for exploiting Azeroth's natural resources. Affiliated with the Trade Coalition, this company extends its operations to various corners of Azeroth to this day. On Kalimdor, they are active in regions like Mulgore, the Barrens, and notably in our case, the Stone Talon Mountains. The goblins discovered that the area was rich in lumber and ore. Known for their engineering prowess, the goblins in Stone Talon developed technologies enabling them to clear large sections of the forest within a brief time span. Their rapid deforestation caused concern and resentment among the Night Elves and the Tauren, who viewed it as a barbaric act. As the goblins gained influence, the Night Elves, who of course aligned with the Alliance and the Horde-affiliated Tauren, sought help from adventurers to address the goblin issue in the mountains. Concurrently, the aggressive Grimtoten tribe, hostile to both factions, persisted in asserting their control over the Stone Teller Mountains. With goblins wreaking havoc in the forest and the Grim Totem tribe striving for dominance, the region became a volatile hub of factional conflict. This is the part of the story where adventurers play a crucial role. As rumours of the goblins' destruction of the Stone Teller Mountain spread across Azeroth in the year 25, adventurers began arriving in the lands to assist their respective factions. Horde adventurers rallied to support the Sunrock Retreat against the Venture Company, mustering up predominantly Orcish and Torrent forces to repair the Venture Company's damage in the region. The once lush and green Windshear Crag lay desolate. Tree stumps, polluted waters, and creaking machinery stood testament to the Goblin's logging expedition. It was led by Gorenzo Wrenchwhistle, a gnome renowned for his mechanical prowess. His invention, the Super Reaper 6000, was able to efficiently dismantle even the mightiest of trees. However, their operation faced internal strife, when Ziz Physics, a disgruntled goblin, once part of the Venture Company, sought revenge by collaborating with adventurers to eliminate Garenzo and disrupt the goblin's endeavours. After examining the stories and the accounts that surround the events at the Windshear Crag during this time frame, it remains uncertain whether it was the Alliance or the Horde who ultimately succeeded in defeating Garenzo Ranchwhistle. The only certainty is that Ziz Physics proudly displays Garenzo's mechanical arm as proof of the kill. The devastation in the Stone Talon Mountains didn't end there. Another section, the Charred Vale in the southwest, was transformed into a landscape of flames and lava by the Venture Company. The once thriving area, home to the Blood Fury Harpies and protected by Treants, fell victim to the Goblins' destructive advances. When the Treants retaliated, the Goblins' actions enraged the Harpies and unleashed numerous elementals 
upon the region. Adventurers from both the Alliance and the Horde, despite feuding with the Goblins, were also dispatched into the Charred Vale to reduce the numbers of the enraged inhabitants, aiming to restore the valley to its former state. Despite clashing with the Harpies and contending with the Alliance in the Charred Vale, the Horde adventurers triumphed in clearing the Vale of the Harpy Menace. They united in a fierce battle that led to the demise of the Harpy's Queen, Blood Fury Ripper. After the Queen's fall, the Harpies retreated with their remaining forces, paving the way for tranquility to return to the land and a brief period of revitalization. Amidst the conflict against the Venture Company's Goblins and the Harpies in the Charred Vale, other skirmishes were simultaneously occurring within the mountains. In the southern reaches of the mountain range, a small troll settlement urgently sought aid from the Horde, and tasked adventurers to confront the Keepers and the Dryads within Stone Talon Peak. Other urgent pleas for aid reverberated across the lands, summoning Horde forces to join the fight against the formidable Grim Totem tribe. In the 25th year, the Stone Talon Mountains faced a resurgence of conflict reminiscent of the Third War. The Druids, dwelling in the Stone Talon Peak, defended their settlement against the Horde. Meanwhile, the Horde itself confronted the Grim Totem tribe within their territory. Both factions engaged in fierce battles against the goblins of the Venture Company, and of course the agitated harpies of the Charred Vale. After the dust had settled, a fragile semblance of peace was restored. Although occasional skirmishes between the Alliance and the Horde persisted, these conflicts would gradually subside in the following year, as both factions ventured through the Dark Portal and into the struggles of Outland. Two years later, following the banishment of Kil Jaden to the Nether and the defeat of the Lich King Arthas, the Stone Teller Mountains would once more ascend to notable prominence among the lands of Azeroth. After Deathwing's catastrophic impact on Azeroth, the Stone Teller Mountains underwent notable changes. The Charred Vale, mostly rejuvenated through the efforts of the Druids, displayed a significant spire of lava protruding from its southern edge. A dormant volcano nearby erupted releasing lava that devastated half of the area, creating an opening to the Veiled Sea. As most harpies inhabited the western part of the Vale, they were likely eliminated, except for those who fled in time. Sister Riven is the sole known survivor. Following the destruction caused by the Cataclysm, the area became home to Black Dragon Whelps, Fisherborn Fire Elementals, and Black Drakes, led by Seldaria. Stone Talon Peak faced assaults from the forces of the Old Gods. It was invaded by the Enraki, Led by the harbinger, Aflas. This resulted in the devastation, the loss of wildlife, and even the corruption of the sons and daughters of Cenarius. Meanwhile, Stone Talon also emerged as a significant battleground during the following Alliance Horde conflict. Now that we've explored the transformative events in the Stone Talon Mountains following the Cataclysm, it's an opportune moment to delve into the changes within the Charred Vale and the events that unfolded during that period. The Charred Vale was selected as a prime venue for one of the main events organised by the Mechanical Engineers Guild of Azeroth, also known as MEGA. MEGA, an association of engineers, arranged competitions and races to showcase their mechanical creations, including things like speedboats. In the Stone Teller Mountains, this MEGA event drew in numerous spectators, including Monty Gaslow, the current trade prince of the Bilgewater Cartel. Prior to Jasta Gallywix's departure from the Horde, Gaslow served as the official goblin leader of Ratchet. As Gaslow and his crew prepared to depart for the races, they were approached by Aramar Thorn, the young Lakeshire boy featured in a previous tale concerning the lore of Feralus and Diamore. You can find a portal to that story in the description below. Aramar requested to accompany Gaslow and his friends on their journey from Tanaris to the Charred Vale, akin to hitching a ride in Azeroth. Gaslow and his crew agreed, escorting Aramar Thorn and his companions aboard the Cloud Kicker from Tanaris to the Charred Vale. Once they arrived and after bidding farewell, Gaslow left them in the Vale, him and his crew continuing on to the location of the Mega Event. Aramar and his friends proceeded northward through the smouldering Vale for several hours. During their travel, an attempt to heal a withered tree was made by Tarindrella a young dryad that sprouted from the seed of Thallis when Aramar Thorn submerged the acorn in water. Unfortunately, her efforts proved futile due to her young age. Maneuvering around dragon nests, they eventually found themselves surrounded by black drakes and whelps. A drake seized Makasa Flintwill, only to be vanquished by the sentinels from Thaldara Overlook, prompting the other dragonkin to flee the scene. Amid the turmoil sparked by the Cataclysm, the newly appointed war chief, Garrosh Hellscream, exhibited a more aggressive stance in the ongoing conflict between the Horde and the Alliance. 
Fueled by the Horde's dire need for resources, Hellscream directed his forces on a rampage through Ashenvale, seeking crucial supplies. This aggression spilled over into the neighbouring Stone Teller Mountains, when Horde forces, led by Overlord Cromgar and General Grebo, made a strategic move to establish dominance over the entire region. They perceived that the Thaldorar Grove, a historically peaceful place of learning, shared by both Night Elves and the Tauren, as a potential threat to the Horde's interests. They believed that the Grove concealed a weapon capable of harming their faction. High Chieftain Cliffwalker, stationed at Cliffwalker Post in the Stone Teller Mountains, strongly opposed Cromgar and Grebo's suspicions. He sent his son, Orthus, to uncover evidence to disprove these claims. Tragically, General Grebo killed Orthus, and unfortunately for him, left evidence that linked him to the murder. Upon discovering his son's fate and the massacre of the Druids at the Grove, by the hands of General Grebo, Cliffwalker confronted him. Their confrontation ended in the High Chieftain's favour, resulting in Grebo's death. Infuriated by his second in command's demise, Overlord Cromgar retaliated by travelling to Cliffwalker Post and set it ablaze. The fires that burned Cliffwalker Post to the ground also resulted in the death of Cliffwalker's wife, Marsha. In a devastating move, Overlord Cromgar, determined to eliminate what he believed as a threat, in front of the High Chieftain's eyes, orchestrated the catastrophic bombing of the Thaldorar Grove, and he did so without the permission of Warchief Hellscream. The explosion obliterated the peaceful sanctuary, leaving destruction and chaos in its wake. Upon learning of these horrific events, Warchief Hellscream took swift and severe action. He arrived at Cliffwalker Post by portal and immediately confronted Cromgar. Garrosh questioned if he had ordered Cromgar to kill innocent people and wreck the lands meant for the Horde's benefit. Of course, Garrosh had not ordered these killings, and Cromgar had acted on his own. Afraid of Garrosh's anger, Cromgar cowered while Garrosh scolded him, recalling the lessons about honour he had learned from Varok Saurfang in Northrend. Garrosh told Cromgar that his actions had brought shame to the Horde and the Orcs. Hellscream grabbed Cromgar by the throat, relieved him of his duties, and ultimately executed him for his heinous actions. The catastrophic bombing of Thaldorar Grove remains a dark and haunting moment in the history of Kalimdor, and unfortunately foreshadows the events that followed, such as the later bombing and destruction of Theramor. Following the upheavals caused by the Cataclysm and the ensuing conflict between the Alliance and the Horde, the tales from the Stone Teller Mountains seem to dwindle once more. With Azeroth's denizens rallying against the Burning Legion during their third invasion, attention shifted away from these mountains for a final time. Among the few stories that emerged after the Legion's Crusade had ended are the tales of Huntress Jalen. Stationed at Stardust Spire in Ashenvale, Jalen holds a leadership position dedicated to safeguarding Alliance allies and thwarting Horde advances across Kalimdor. Even after the Fourth War on Azeroth, Jalen continued to lead the Spire and persistently patrols the Ashenvale border with her Sentinel warriors to this day. According to Horde accounts, they decisively dismantled every siege weapon the Horde attempted to bring from the Stone Teller Mountains. As a warning to their adversaries, the remains of the destroyed machines and the bodies of the engineers were left at the Spire's doorstep. In the intricate narrative of Azeroth's history, the Stone Teller Mountains unfolded a saga woven with harmony, conflict, and sacrifices. It all began with Thrall and Jaina seeking wisdom from the Oracle at Stone Talon Peak and their quest to shape the destiny of their people in this mysterious realm of Kalimdor. Throughout time, this once tranquil terrain bore witness to relentless turmoil. Amidst the whispers of peace, clashes of swords echoed across the landscape. The coexistence between Night Elves and Torrin faced trials from the encroaching forces of the Venture Company, and of course the malevolent Grimtotem tribe. The Charred Vale's beauty succumbed to greed and devastation, where the Super Reaper roamed and the Harpies met a tragic end in the volcanic eruption. The tragedies suffered by High Chieftain Cliffwalker and the innocents lost in the bombing of Thaldorar Grove left scars across the land and in the heart of its inhabitants. As the echoes of battle subsided and the winds of conflict shifted, the Stone Teller Mountains endured, a testament to the resilience and fortitude of its people. From seeking guidance at Stone Talon Peak to enduring the horrors of war in Thaldorar Grove, this land's legacy embodies both valour and sorrow. As we bid farewell to this chapter, let us remember the sacrifices made and the lessons learned within the storied Stone Teller Mountains. May the whispers of peace and the courage of those who defended them resonate throughout Azeroth's history.